professional photographer, I get asked lots of questions from people looking to find out the secret to taking and processing images like a pro, especially on my Facebook page, where I post daily with images from my most recent nature trips. Some of my most asked questions are, are your images straight out of the camera? How do you edit your images? And why can't I get the same result as you? So today, I'm going to explode the myth that pro photographers take perfect shots every time. And more importantly, I'm going to demonstrate in real time how I select my less than perfect shots and turn them into great shots using Photoshop and just one third party app with each image finished in less than five minutes. Hi, I'm Ken Hadfield. Welcome to my Better Photography channel. Okay, so I've come across to my desktop now. Before we start, I just want to point out, you know, what I'm saying is quite true, that you know, not every shot taken by a pro photographer is perfect, unless you're in a studio situation where you'll be able to do your planning in advance. With wildlife photography, to get shots like I'm showing now, almost all of them need to have some level of correction in them. And I tend to basically underexposed rather than overexposed because on many cases you can bring an underexposure back again because there's detail underneath there to be had other times if you overexpose the detail disappears to pure white there's nothing to pull back again and i'm a bit of a hoarder and i've kept images back for many years now and what i've decided to do with some of those is to bring them into photoshop with a new ai technology and i've been able to look back at old images and actually do things that were unthinkable when I first took the images out. My wife did say you should throw those away, they'll never be any good. Well, I'm glad I waited because even this particular image here, which I took in Norfolk, and it's almost unheard of for this behaviour to be seen, uh, but this Marsh Harrier came down and plucked an Avocet chick and was attacked by the Avocets as it tried to go away. And it was from a long way away, so I had to kind of zoom in which lost a lot of detail and i kind of stored it away created a lot of interest but i couldn't really do that much to to increase the quality until a program called topaz gigapixel came along and i was able to kind of keep the quality of the image which then went on to go into the national press in the uk so never give up on your images you never know what developments are, are ahead so what i'm going to do today is i'm going to bring up a couple of images that are not quite correct put a folder here with a couple of images in a bridge and that will allow me to open it up and bring it through camera raw and then into photoshop and what you often find or what i've often find you'll see this image is quite underexposed it's a mushy image and you know with the technology that there is now this is quite an easy fix in just a few minutes i just want to prove that to you to turn it from a wishy-washy image to potentially kind of a competition image or certainly good enough for the press Obviously, the content is not something the press would be particularly interested in, but it, it may be of interest to stock photography, that type of thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this through the process that I use on pretty much all of my images to show you what I do to turn this image into a much more professional image. So I will be using Photoshop and Topaz Gigapixel. And what I do is I keep three copies or I make three copies. One is a PSD Photoshop large file, which I can keep on file if I want to do anything with it in the future. I then do a large JPEG, the same large size as a PSD file, which I keep if I wanted to put this into a stock agency, you need it in that type of resolution. But I also reduce the size and take it down to uh, a standard JPEG, which I size at 1400 by 1000 pixels. That I use for going onto Facebook. Uh, I have a uh, ten thousand people who follow me now on Facebook, and I regularly post to there pretty much daily. And basically, th that size will fit nicely into my Facebook profile. So let's get started. So I'm going to initially just open the image up, and this is going to take it into Camera Raw, which is one of my favourites. I've just done a tutorial on Camera Raw, which you can find in the links below if you want to have a look at that, and. What I'm going to do here is I tend to do an auto. The auto basically just gives you an idea what uh, Camera Raw thinks it should be. Clearly you can see it's clipping the blacks there and it's a wee bit too bright. So I can then use the controls down below. And what I would do with that, 
I would bring the highlights down a bit but then get rid of some of these shadows and if I wanted to go even further on this one I'd probably take the blacks down until the blue disappears altogether and already look at the difference that's just a couple of minutes and we've got a much better exposed image you can see on the histogram it's leaning across to the right hand side for the brightness there so I might well just bring the exposure down just a, a tad you see what it's done with that I'll go back again it's just moved the entire histogram across to the left hand side give a bit more kind of impact on the bird itself and at, at this stage I'm quite happy with that to take it into the next stage which I'll do is then I'll open the image and take it into Photoshop. Here it's come into Photoshop and I kind of got to decide do I want to keep it as it is or do I want to turn it into a portrait. Um, looking backwards I think I probably prefer the portrait at the moment because it's got a, a central pillar coming up there it's kind of in a nice upright position there and what I probably would do is reduce that down and put the bird kind of slightly on the third so it's looking over to the left hand side looking into the space there just gives it a little bit of a better balance to the image so I'm going to say that one's okay now with that one I'm going to save the file save as and I'm just going to go into my latest PSD and I'm not going to I'm not going to save that there because I already have it saved from a few days ago so I'm going to leave that as it is okay so I'm going to cancel that so then what I would then do I'll go to edit convert the profile very important if you're going to save something as a JPEG you convert it to sRGB and I would then go to another file I preset which is going to be large JPEG as you can see there I'm not going to save that because it's already been done well this is something I do now for my Facebook page I will go to image size I would then reduce that down to to a thousand which is then going to be height of 1401 as I did say earlier I use 1400 by a thousand usually so I'm going to go into that and I'm going to press OK it's now resized it so I've saved a small JPEG to my desktop and I've now reopened it again so that I can now take it into Topaz Gigapixel, one of my all-time favourite apps. The AI capabilities of this app is unbelievable. I've already done a YouTube video showing exactly how to use Topaz Gigapixel and it's used mainly to actually enlarge the image. However, it also has an effect of adding a little pop to it which you can't get elsewhere and it's actually made some amazing differences to images that I put through even when they didn't need to be enlarged I put them into gigapixel just to see what the effect would be and very often I found that it actually still made an improvement so we go to automate this is where my gigapixel is and that will come in and what you're going to see uh, here is it will actually give you a split view of four images each of these images is being processed in a different way i'll just move that down there as you can see he's got the four images here and this size was shown is a thousand by 1401 it's going to turn it to 2000 by 2802 which is two times the size you can go up to six times plus and get a really good result these four boxes here represent these models. The models are basically the four different renderings that it will, it will do on the image to enlarge and upgrade the image. The green lines here mean that the rendering is finished and this is the finished article for you to decide which one you prefer. Uh, you can see clearly the standard is, is over sharpened as is the very compressed. But we come over this side to the low resolution and the HQ, the high quality, you can see that there is a nice pop to the bird. You can see that eye beautifully. The clarity on the beak is absolutely stunning, which you wouldn't get on ordinary processing many times. The sharpening would be rather difficult. You then choose which one you want. I prefer the high quality, so I'm going to click on that, and then I'm going to set Apply. It then uh, render for the final rendering of the image. You can follow the process on the top right-hand side. You can see on the left-hand side here, uh, the size it was, the size it's going to be, the fact it's, it's been enlarged to double the size. It's going to be high quality. It takes a little while to render because it's doing a lot of work in the background. And it will take it back into Photoshop so that you can then do any further processing that you wish to do. So as you can see, it's come back into Photoshop. It's added Gigapixel as a layer. I would just then normally flatten that. And to me, that is a finished image ready to go on the internet. 
ready to be put up for stock photography and on this occasion perhaps even with the beauty of the bird and the profile of the bird I might be tempted to put this into some kind of competition. Uh, so that's the first one that I wanted to show you. I'm going to briefly go through the second one as well. I'm not going to save that because I already have this image processed. So we'll go back to Bridge. And I'm just going to bring this one in to show you how I would process this. As you can see, the image as a whole, the nest not focused. It's difficult to get that with the aperture that I want to maintain. As you can see, the aperture was 7.1. Because it's a very long telephoto lens, it still doesn't bring that into focus. So what I would do with that is, first of all, I'll go into Auto and see what that does to the image. Again, immediately it does quite a good job of actually brightening up the bird itself and Camera Raw. Camera Raw is a, is a super tool. I probably do 90% of my adjustments in Camera Raw. And it, for the moment, I kind of, kind of like that as it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it into Photoshop. So now I want to bring a decent crop into it. What I want to do, I obviously do this, I think, in landscape. I'm going to get rid of the nest because it's not good enough. And I think that that there, I like the idea of the branch coming out of the corner. I like the fact it's leaping across and on the other branch there. So I'm going to choose that as a crop. What I would then probably do on this one is just go and clone out this branch here. I mean, this is very rough. Remove that altogether. There we go. And I think that's pretty good already. So once again, I would save that one as it is now as a PSD file, I would then, again, I would come to convert the profile, turn it into sRGB for the net, save that as a large JPEG, I would then resize it, image, image size, and you can see the detail on the legs and everything is just incredible there. So I would take that down to width of 1400, and then I'll go OK. I'll save this onto my desktop again. Save as. So let's just put on Weaver. Just so I can recognise it. I'll then take it into the desktop as a JPEG. And I'll then go back to my desktop, find the image, bring it back in again. That's a small JPEG. Again, bring in Gigapixel. And once again, as you can see, that's brought it in in the four samples that we have there. Again, you wait for that to render. Again, at the bottom, it's going from 1400 by 1000 to 2800 by 2000. And it's what's saying here is that we actually, because it's highlighted there in blue, that's what we're actually looking at at the minute, the high quality image in blue. And uh, you can actually move that around if you want to get some idea of the detail uh, on the feet. You will find that it will re-render though. So here we are, it's finished rendering now on the four images. Some are better than others. You can see again the standard is kind of over sharpened as they come very compressed. But when we go across this side, once again, we get a better effect. And looking between the low resolution and the high quality, the actual, the black, it looks a better texture to me. It doesn't look grainy at all. So again, I'll pick the HQ, apply, and that's going to take it back into Photoshop for any final editing that I want to do. So as you can see now, it's returned it back into Photoshop. Again, I normally flatten the image and then I was able to do any further processing I might want to. But that really is a really nice image. And uh, there you go, it's flattened out there now. I think that's quite a worthy image to put up on my Facebook page uh, or offer to a stock photography channel. There's a couple of little artifacts there from when I was doing the, the cloning. Obviously, I would take them out. Apart from that, to me, that is a finished image. Just going to give you a little tip before I leave. The, the reason that quite often you miss your focus or you, you miss your exposure, especially with wildlife photography, is that you may be photographing in one direction with the sun, with certain settings on your camera, and you, you see some at the corner of eye, that actually happened with the snail kite, came in behind me, I was already photographing something on the other side, and I turned round quickly, and what I always do in these circumstances, and I would strongly recommend you do this, because these birds can lift off at a fraction of a second, I take a couple of shots at my existing settings, in the hope that later on, just as I've shown you today, I can come back and correct it, because... I'd rather take a setting that's not quite right of the bird before it takes off than to fiddle with the settings and miss the bird altogether. That stood me in good stead many, many times. So when you swing around, if you know you need to make an adjustment, unless you think you've got the time, knock a couple of shots off, 
out your existing settings and then with a bit of luck the bird will stay and you can adjust your settings and, and do a proper exposure or you may be able to go back to those two not quite correct settings and make a correction that makes it a usable image just as i've shown you with the snail kite a few minutes ago so that's it for this one see you next time on the better photography channel